Good afternoon and welcome to the fourth Charney Peace Simulation at MS. You are going to experience 24 hours which are going to be intense, challenging and difficult. You're going to have a real impact of your own future. And I believe that once you own your life, you can make a decision about your present and future, you become a stronger citizen and a better leader. Okay, so I just want to say, I think I understand that you believe that this is your land, and, and but as a Palestinian, um, I feel that, so when we're, when we're having this discussion, they're like, you have to give up a little too. Choice. First of all, okay, let's the Israeli finish. government invested trillions and trillions of dollars. In and they knew areas. it was an illegal it was even a university, settlement. And they knew it's not it. illegal. It's, it's illegal. illegal. Oh my it's God. Illegal. It's illegal. It's illegal. It's illegal. That's why when you set the time frame, you have to take in consideration many things. The more they talk to each other, the more they listen to each other, the more they understand each other. And once they start understanding each other, as I say, the chances would be definitely much higher as when it comes to actually achieving something. Some of the ideas, I mean, are very provocative. Some uh, of the, or the, the, the topics that are being um, discussed are very sensitive for Israelis and for Palestinians at the same time. But, but it's very good to talk about these things and it's very good to talk about them openly and to, make, and to know for sure that no one is going to judge you for this and for that. This environment is the environment that would actually lead us somewhere. This environment is the environment that would actually, that is very conducive to innovation and to, you know, uh, creative ideas. In 20 years from now, they're going to be assuming positions. They will be calling shots or calling decisions on the Israeli side, on the Palestinian side, or also in the international level. Federation. We, they can have a three-state federation because Gaza, West Bank, because Gaza and West Bank are also like administered by different bodies politically. You know? Yeah, yeah, and that's, like, so, that's like also yeah. A huge so thing. and yeah. But also the political opinions is likely to be different there. It's an important experience to actually see and hear the arguments of the other side, and it's more important than the actual resolution which it in the end comes comes to is more important what the people experience and that they are a bit taken out of their comfort zone. Um, I think we've got a really good idea. There's either two states and just two states. There's two states in, uh, moving a process from a two state to a one state, and there's immediately a one state. We should try to come to a general consensus yeah, before we just go with the majority. Oops, everyone has... No, I signed it. No, no, they signed it. Okay. <laughs> we have different perspectives on it, but it's both. it's a problem we both have, and we both have to solve it and we have to interact with one another in a way which prioritizes solving this problem. It is a Western intervention, even if it's not military. So basically declaring war, if we do this, this, this move and this project, um, what about Gaza? Success is not to defeat your enemy, not to defeat the other side. A success is a good solution, the best solution for both sides. We decided that all the settlements that are currently in the Palestinian territory will be um, part of the Palestinian state. So the people the, um, that are living there currently will have a three-year period to decide whether they want to keep living in there or to move back to Israel. So, um, being in this kind of environment for the first time was a bit scary for me. At the same time, I found it really interesting because um, it's very easy to just debate on whose fault it is or why the conflict exists, but once you have to actually think about um, solutions to the conflict and ways to make peace or at least to make the, the two um, people living together easier, um, it becomes harder and it becomes challenging. And the consensus is not an agreement but a compromise. A compromise that address your needs and my needs. The kids, uh, they're like the future of mm -hmm. what is Palestine and what is Israel. And if we, t uh, if we tackle the problem within that uh, age, for both sides to know about the others and to actually look at it from their own, uh, their own uh, point of view and not influenced by any. We would have UN observers regulating checkpoints and humanitarian groups like Beth Salem 
com compulsory at checkpoints in order to make sure that humanitarian um, issues weren't breached. We would also have more openings so that Palestinian people didn't have to wait in lines for like up to three hours in order to go back and forward. I think the biggest challenge is to overcome our previous conceptions of the conflict and be more open-minded from other people's perspectives and also more able to reach a solution rather than win a debate. We can't achieve peace by violence, obviously, but like through understanding like of each perspective, we can achieve peace. So we need first to listen, understand, and then comment, and hopefully we're going to achieve like achieve all peace. that peaceful day that we dream of. Because it shouldn't be a conflict. It, exactly. should, be, it should be a peaceful way of communication. Peaceful communication, because that's what we're trying to achieve. You're going to show us when the leaders are stuck, maybe young people can come with creative ideas that no one can think about it. For us, we decided to go for a one-state solution, which was uh, a federation. Since it was a federation, we could not continue with the same names, such as Israel or Palestine, since it was one, uh, one state. So we made a new name, which is the Eastern Mediterranean United Federation. Um, I think it was a really good initiative. Um, the fact that you highlighted equal equality and equal rights for every citizen in this uh, disagreement is, is very is very positive. And most importantly, I see how you managed to think out of, outside of the box, and I think that is really necessary in terms of uh, what negotiators today need need to do. I learned a lot from you, and take into your consideration that everything that you did here, we analyze and we implement it to Israelis and Palestinians. Just know that at the exact same time, there is someone there that wants the opposite from you and he's doing the opposite. We are trying again and again to accomplish something and to take what is going on here a little bit, even a little bit, to a different direction. And I, think, I don't think that we have the privilege to give up.